Alright then, we're gonna take a look. I'll put you in again instead of Scarabia. So first and foremost, we have a handy dandy rule booklet. You're only gonna need the first, uh, what, three pages? They're uh, full of pictures, illustrations, examples. Very well done, should have you up and running in no time at all. Also, I can give you a feel for how the game plays right now. Now, I do wanna mention, uh, I'm teaching you the base game. There are some special rules for one-on-one -on -one and solo play. They don't drastically change the game, like in solo play, you're actually trying to cover all the scarabs. Uh, but the gameplay itself is still pretty similar in, in some different aspects. So first and foremost, you're gonna be setting up your board like this. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to pin in the different scarabs, and the more you pin in the scarabs, the more points you're going to get. What am I talking about? Let's go over the components, let's get in the gameplay, and you'll quickly understand how the game works. So everyone is going to have the exact same setup. You're going to arrange these tiles right here. They're gonna have four of them, as you can see, uh, in whatever way you want, and then everyone's going to copy how you have it. So this would be the setup for everyone one right now but everyone would have different colored mountains different colored backdrops and different colored pieces even though all these tetrisy pieces are the exact same these pieces are going to correlate to these cards right here and there's 12 cards in this deck right here and i'll just i won't beat around the bush i'll show you exactly how the game is played so you're going to flip over a card boom everyone's going to grab that card and then everyone is going to play that card on to their board so when you first play you do have to make sure that your piece is touching one of these four spaces in the middle right here. So there are uh, certain conditions you have to meet. Now after this, every other piece after this just has to be touching another piece. Not in diagonal, it has to be orthogonally. But that's really the main rules of the game. But let's show you how you score. So there's the piece right there, and I feel like a good spot might be right here. I'm not covering up any scarabs. So now everybody plays their piece, and then you check to see if you score points. At this particular moment, I would not score points. How do you know when you score points? Well, you score points when you have pinned a scarab. So let's just give an example. Let's say that my next move, I made this, which would be a terrible move, but I did this. That would give me one point because there's one scarab here, and it's in a space that is one. Um... So let's do another example. Let's pretend that I somehow was able to manage to do... Uh, actually, let's just flip over another card and then do the score. So next card, we got this one right here. And grab that piece. Let's see if I can... Actually, this is an even better example. So let's say that I chose to do this move, which once again, not the greatest move in the world, but now I'm going to score two points. Why do I score two points now instead of one point before? Well, because there's two spaces here. So once again, there's only one space here. So one scarab, I score one point in this particular instance, two spaces, one scarab, I score two points. Now, what could happen? Well, just, let's just keep going. Let's just keep going, flip over another card. So what I do is I take one of these little two tokens right here. And what I like to do is just boop, put it right there. Let me know that I scored two points. So now I got this symbol right here. Here, which, hmm, Let's see if I can score me some quick points to give you guys an example. Uh, ooh, yeah, that might work. That dog is going to hunt right there. So we'll do that. Doesn't score me any points. Actually, that's not a legal move. Womp, 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 womp. But this is, and that's actually a pretty good move. So then we got our next piece, which is not a piece. Actually, that piece is perfect. So I might put it right there. And now I would score points because these scarabs are pinned in. They can't go anywhere because the rock counts as a border and also the outside counts as a border. So for this one, I'm going to score six points. I'm gonna score one, two, three points for each scarab I have, and I have two scarabs. So boom, I'm going to score six points. Now let's talk about the restrictions uh, because you could be like, well, this area is all closed in. Why don't I score points for that? Your enclosement has to be four spaces or less. So the maximum number of points you're gonna get per scarab is going to be four points. But if you can do it right, uh, you can score yourself quite a good deal of points. I think the max I've ever seen is 12. I don't think there's any way you can get four in a row because just the way that it's laid out. Uh, but there are instances, like say for instance, if you were able to uh, you know, shut this area down where you could score 12 points on a turn. Anywho, you're gonna continue to go until you run out of cards. Now you will get into instances in this game where either Either A, you don't want to play a tile, or B, you cannot play a tile. So first, A, if you don't want to play a tile because it covers a whole bunch of scarabs, 
tough cookies you have to play if you can play and if you can't play then you just don't get to play and you're womp 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 sad unless of course you win the game which i have done i have gotten to the point where it's like i can't play the last two and i've still won the game if you do well enough at the beginning but anywho after all these cards have played or after no one can play any more of their tiles you total up the number of scarab points you have and whoever has the most scarab points will be the winner of the game and that in a nutshell is how you're going to play scar scar Ab ya. Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. And today I'm very excited to check out Scrabia from Blue Orange Games. This is for one to four players, taking about 15 to 20 minutes to play, and it's for ages eight plus. And in Scarabia, you are going to be like an archaeologist, dude, and you're going to be going to other different locations and trying to capture Scarabias, scarabs by capturing them in different areas. It's a really light, simple, abstract strategy game where everyone is going to have the exact same board and get the exact same pieces and place their pieces at the exact same time, but people are going to end up with different scores and different boards. So it is a non-confrontational uh, abstract strategy game which has three different modes to play. You can play the base mode, or you can play a one versus one mode, or you can even play it as a solo game. But is any of that good enough to recommend the game? Let's open it up, and I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, Scrabia from Blue Orange Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. One to four players are somewhat a very restrictive player count. Also, there is no interaction in this game whatsoever, which while I am going to mention in the pros, I think for most people is going to be a cons. This is a 100% solitaire game if you're playing the base version of the game or obviously if you're playing the solitaire version of the game which is another thing i tried the solitaire version and it was okay you know it wasn't something that i would really recommend the game for now that being said you do need to know that abstract strategy games are my least favorite genre of games and uh, i don't like solo games and it's like hey just beat your high score beat your high score i don't like games like that that's not the kind of solo game for me and that's what this is so the it, if that is a type of game for you, then you might want to check this one out, though. Uh, another con that I have with this game is the theme doesn't come across. It just feels like you're trying to pin in th things for victory points. You know, everybody's got their own different board, which is nice. They have their own distinctive background, which is cool. And there's these 3D mountains, which are completely neat, but completely unnecessary that I like. But, you know, the theme does not come across in any way, shape, or form. You do need to know that. Um... Yeah, I mean, there's not really too many big fundamental issues I have with the game. I think it's a good game, and I'm not the biggest abstract strategy fan, but I had fun with this game. I thought it was good, and I think if you like abstract strategy games, you're more likely to like this game, obviously. It's filler weight, so you need to know that. It's a very light, simple game, which will be a turn off some people. There's no special abilities. There's no special powers or asymmetrical or any of that willy-nilly stuff, uh, which, you know might be a good or good not a good thing depending on who you are and your gaming preferences moving on to the pros i thought scarabia or scarabs yeah or i don't know how you pronounce it was good i thought it was a good game i brought it in my classroom the kids had fun with the game even though i crushed them uh but that's you know that's to be expected with a game like this where uh skill levels do matter i played it on my game night and they thought it was a good game you know, no one was offended by the game. No one was like, oh man, this game's terrible. But no no one was also like, man, this game's great. I gotta go pick this up. It firmly lies somewhere in the middle, which is a hard game to recommend in this day and age when we are just over flooded with games. Um, so the big things that I would highlight about this game. So from my personal perspective, I do like the box insert. They have like this little square thing in here, which stores everything really nicely. They're not their own little compartments, but it's just like this this little cross thing in there which really works well to store all the pieces which is good um i think some people are really going to like the aspect of the game where everyone starts at point a and ends up at point you know q or whatever uh however 12 letters you start with the exact same thing as everybody else and you are going to play the exact same tiles as everybody else and it just is a game about trying to do better than everyone else it literally is like you all four just playing your own solitaire games if you're playing the base game and some people are really going to dig that and if you really dig that and you're looking for a lightweight filler game that does that then this one might be for you this one actually would be a great fit for you if those two things sound like something that you want um so family weight game i think it's a good family weight game game night lightweight filler game i think it's a good game night lightweight filler game 
it's not one that I would personally grab just because it's not my personal cup of tea, you know, being abstract strategy and being non-confrontational and whatnot. But if it is, this one might be one you want to check out. Uh, I do like the components. I mean, the 3D mountains, they serve no purpose whatsoever aside from looking cool. And they do. They look cool, which there you go. Um, game does not say it's welcome. Very lightweight filler game. But in the end, Scarabia from Blue Orange Games, I think it's a good game. I don't think it's a great game. I don't think it's a very good game. And it's a hard one for me to recommend. Uh, if you're looking at a lightweight filler game, I would go with, you know, King Domino, even from the same company. I would much rather play that game over this game. And actually someone, when we were playing this game, said, man, I'd rather be playing King Domino. And I was like, that seems like an odd thing to say because they're not similar games, but they do, you know, they're both still lightweight filler games. They're both, for the most part, abstract strategy games, even though I do feel like the theme in King Domino comes across slightly better. But... In the end, Scarabia, it's good, not great, and I feel like this is one of going to be one of those games that gets lost in time, unfortunately, but there's a lot of games, you know, you release a, a thousand games a year in this hobby or something stunningly large like that, you're going to have games like this, and I think this is going to be one of those cases. So Scarabia from Blue Orange Games, I think it's good, I don't think it's great, not one I'm going to be keeping in my classroom or uh, in my house. So, there you go. If you enjoyed this review, please sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know spelunking. Would you ever like to go spelunking? For me personally, yeah, absolutely. Count me in. Because here's the thing. I went to Mammoth Cave when I was a kid with my mom. That was super cool. I loved going through the cave and checking it out. So, I would absolutely love, you know, to get the snorkeling gear or the scuba diving gear even. And just going into deep underwater caves. I think that would be really super cool. Even it's scary too. Like, but I love... I love being scared, so I feel like that would definitely be a scary situation, which for me would be awesome. But there you go. Let me know. Comments below. Would you like to go spelunking? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.